So whenever you open the cooling system on your car in order to maybe fix a leak or replace a faulty component, you need to do this test afterwards in order to confirm that not only you fixed the leak, but also to confirm that there are no other leaks. Hey, 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 how's it going? Do it yourselfers. So as some of you may remember, a little while ago, I replaced a badly corroded and leaking radiator on this 1993 Honda Prelude. Now that video stopped right after I replaced that radiator because I was gonna do a separate video showing you how you can get all the air out of the, your cooling system. Uh, before you add coolant to the system. But there's also one other procedure that I need to perform after whenever you open the cooling system to fix a leak or maybe you replace a faulty component to make sure there are no other leaks so that before you add new coolant to the system, you can go ahead and fix that as well. And as some of you may have guessed, the test I'm talking about is pressure testing your cooling system, of course. Here's our pump for this kit. These are all the different adapters for different radiators. Uh, this Test kit also has this tool which will allow you to pull vacuum on the system before you fill the system with coolant. We'll save that for a separate video, but for this video, this is basically your pump that you will use to pressurize the system. These are all the different adapters, so on and so forth. So basically the way this works is that you find the right adapter from your kit, you go and find your radiator cap, you remove the radiator cap and you put this adapter in, and then you attach the pump to this uh, adapter. However, on, in my case, my uh, this coolant pressure test kit that I have uh, is not the best, you know. If, if you're interested in one of these, since this doesn't fit this aftermarket radiator, that is. If you're interested in one of these, I'll put a link to the Astro one. That's probably a much better uh, tool, and I'll probably be purchasing that pretty soon. But anyway, lucky for me, I have an adapter from an old Harbor Freight test kit that I have that fits. Now, it goes without saying, if you have an empty system and you pressure test the system, you may not find a leak because there's nothing to leak out of the system. Now, one cheap way to get around this is to fill the system with distilled water. And again, it has to be distilled water, and these are pretty cheap, you can get them at any store pretty much. Of course, instead of filling the system with factory coolant, you have this leaking out, a lot cheaper. You can get this in and out of the system for a couple of bucks. Then after you do all your repair, replace or you know refill the system with the correct coolant. Something I need to clarify and something that I've already done to this engine is that you pressure test the system without coolant or distilled water in it, and if the pressure does not hold, it'll mean you have a leak in the system, and then you can add the distilled water and redo the pressure test to find the leak. So we line this up, push it, press it down, screw it in, make sure it's nice and tight so that there's no leaks here, giving us a fault test. Next, we grab our pump, put this on this adapter. And next, you just use this pump to pressurize the system. Now you need to know what your system's pressure rating, your cooling system pressure rating is. Uh, on this car, it's 1.1 bars, or in other words, about 16 PSI. And as you can see on this pump, on this gauge, we have both bar and PSI ratings. So yeah, again, for your car, it may be different, you know, but it's usually between 13 to, you know, 17, 18 PSI, give or take. So yeah, next you just want to pump this and get it to that PSI that's for your car. We are at, here we go, we're at 16 PSI. So now, if it's holding, you just want to let it sit and wait about 20 minutes. Make sure that that pressure holds and there are no leaks. So yeah, it's been a few seconds and I can not only actually see the pressure dropping a little bit, but also hear something. And it's coming from down here. Right down here. There it is. We have ourselves a leak on this side. And if we come back up here, the leak seems to be coming from this end. So yeah, let's try to take a closer look and see where this leak is coming from now. This may not be easy to find from up top, but we, you know, we're just gonna try to look for evidence of where we could be leaking. And I see some back here, coolant leaks, you know, there's not a whole lot of places you can get coolant leaks from, but sometimes they're hard to find. See that corrosion right, uh, corrosion right there on this uh, lower timing belt cover, I believe? That's probably from where our coolant leak is. You know, it's leaked on that cover. The corrosion has dried on this cover and you know, that's probably where it's leaking. Here's a closer shot from this angle. I still don't see where the leak is coming out of. It's just dripping down there in our catch can right now, but I can take an educated guess. That's where I think the water pump lives. And by the way, here's a look at our pressure reading after a couple of minutes. You know, it's down to about nine and a half, maybe 10 PSI. This should stay steady for a good 20 minutes if you have no leaks. So before we move on and try to find our leak, we need to remove the pressure from the system so that we stop leaking. Uh, there's a pressure release valve here, we press that. And then now we can dig in and try to find our leak. 
All right, so it looks like in order to get a closer look and find our leak, we need to remove that upper timing belt cover. So in order to do that, we need to remove this valve cover, I believe. In order to remove that, we need to remove these uh, spark plug wires. We need to remove this cable from our alternator. It looks like maybe we can just remove this bolt and push this up and get this valve cover under it and out of the way. And then there's two bolts that are holding this lower timing belt cover in place. I think there's one, there's one right there. One right there, and hopefully that's it. All right, so first the spark plug wires. Get a little twist, pull, no oil, no oil, no oil. That's a good day. Next we'll remove this uh, PCV hoses. First we'll get this clamp out of the way. Give these a little twist, gentle twist, because you could break these. You could also, I guess, Pull this PVC valve, or a PCV valve rather, out of the here. And then this breather hose, first the clamp. Next we'll remove this 10 millimeter bolt that's holding this uh, wire for alternator. I'm gonna check and see. Uh, now we're just gonna have to get this cable out of the way completely. And in order to do that, we need to first remove this connector from our alternator. Just press down on this and hopefully this will come out without breaking, like that. And then we need to remove that 10 millimeter uh, nut and get this cable out of the way. And of course, this is a Honda, so this is gonna be a 10 millimeter. And if there's a washer that's gonna come out with this cable, make sure you don't lose it. So, you know, take your time and look out for washers. Oh, no washers on this one. There's also a plastic screw that's holding this bracket in, so go ahead and remove that as well. Then after that, this should pop out and you can put it out of the way. All right, next, in order to remove our valve cover, looks like there's five 10 millimeter nuts holding it in, two there, three, four, five. So we're gonna remove that next. There's also a 10 millimeter bolt here holding in this grounding wire as well. So go ahead and remove that next. Make sure you make a note of them and put them back in. All right, next you need to break loose this valve cover. It's probably been there for a good 50, 60,000 miles. Oh, that wasn't that bad. If you can help it, you wanna get one side loose, then the other side. But you know, this doesn't look to be that bad. Maybe with a little back here a little bit. Yep, that should come out now. Watch out for these washers. Make sure you don't lose those. There we go. So here's a closer look at the top of this engine, the cylinder head. Again, this car has 200,000 miles on it. And as you can see, it kind of shows. I'm happy to report, however, that the cam lobes look in good condition. None of them look excessively worn or worn out more than the others. But again, you know, 200,000 miles, this is pretty much what you can ask for. As far as our leak, here's our timing belt. You can see this water, this distilled water that's gone on this timing belt. It's probably coming from down there. Again, we suspect our water pump, but in order to find out for sure, we need to remove these two 10 millimeter bolts here and remove that timing belt cover. There's one, here's the second one. The second one is longer, so make a note of that. Next, we can hopefully remove our upper timing belt cover. Let's get this old dipstick tube out of the way. Come on, now. There we go. All right, so let's dive down and show you our water pump. There, there's the, that gear. That's our water pump right there. I don't know how well you guys are gonna be able to see on camera, but there's obviously water, distilled water all around it on the gear and stuff. But next, let's pressurize the system again and get you guys a money shot. All right, so here we go. Let's see if we can get a visual confirmation. So here's our camshaft gear. Right there, that gear right there. That's our water pump gear. Now there is uh, wet spots, there's distilled water around it, but I do not see anything actually leaking out from this angle. But from this angle, right on the outside of this timing belt that I can hopefully zoom in, right there. Right there you guys can hopefully see the water dripping down. There's again our gear, that's our water pump right below it. We're, we're losing water right there. 
So yeah, we verified that we're losing water from our water pump. Luckily, it's not our head gasket. Now again, that's highly unlikely that you would have an external head gasket about on these cars, but nonetheless, you want to make sure and check. But yeah, once we get in there, we're not just going to replace our water pump, of course. We're going to replace our timing belts, timing belt components, the rollers, the drive belts, thermostat, thermostat housing gasket, valve cover gasket, so on and so forth. But this is one way to find a coolant leak. Of course, you do this when you open the system. Another way is to, before you open the system, to do a repair, let's say. Let's say you have a pesky coolant leak that you can't locate. You put some UV dye made for a cooling system inside your cooling system. And then with some, you know, you run the engine for a while, then with some UV glasses and some uh, UV lights, you go around and check for leaks. And then where it's leaking coolant, it's gonna be pretty bright and it's gonna stand out, stand out at you and you're gonna be able to locate it much easier. But you do that, of course, to find the leak, then once you fix your system, your cooling system, uh, you have to do this test to verify you have no other leaks. All right, so if you enjoyed watching this video and wanna see me work on this car further, or you simply wanna see other videos related to this video, Make sure you subscribe and hit that bell notification. Also check out these other related videos. I put links to on this side of the screen. Also links in the suggestion box, those will work as well. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.